everyone welcome back to my channel I'm so glad you're here I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas we did I'll insert a couple clips Do you like it? Yes. Climb to it. <laughs> This video, as you can tell from the title, is going to be pros and cons of being a hairdresser. Some of them are super interesting. Actually, all of them are super interesting to me, but hopefully they are to you too. And uh, maybe you're interested in a career in hairdressing, or maybe you're just wanting an inside scoop to our world, but that's what this video is going to be. So, hope you like it. Let me get comfortable. Take off my shoes. Okay, so I have a few things written down just so I would be able to reference them. Pros and cons, okay, let's get right to it. Pros, okay. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Never. I'm so serious. There's always something new happening, always new people you're encountering. It's quite hilarious actually. I heard a story. I wasn't there the day that this happened, but there was a man in the salon and he full on belted out under the boardwalk for all to hear. All the clients and all the hairdressers were just kind of like, what's happening? But yeah, he took it very seriously. So that sort of stuff bound to happen. Um, a con of being a hairdresser, if you're self-employed like myself, you don't really get any bennies, okay? No benefits, no health insurance, no 401k, no retirement. You have to take responsibility for that yourself. You have to try to figure it all out. Um, you can see a financial advisor and that helps. Your tax accountant can obviously help and kind of make you see um, how much money you can allot for that throughout your year based off of your income. Um, so that's one of the, the negatives. There, There's really not much um, in the way of benefits if you are self-employed. I know some of the like corporate places have a little bit more to offer in that realm, but uh, yeah, yeah. So next, connection with other people on a deep level. That is for sure a pro. I think it was my first month or two being a cosmetologist at the salon that I work at now and a woman came into the salon and I was waxing her eyebrows and giving her a haircut. That was what she wanted for her services. And um, she had a gift card from a company that um, takes care of battered women. And so they gave her this gift card and she came in and she told me her story. And her story basically was she finally got up enough courage to leave her man who had been physically abusing her and um, he snuck into her house in the middle of the night and just cut anywhere he could grab um, while she was sleeping, cut her hair. And she woke up with him hovering over her with scissors. That must have been terrifying. And he told her if he couldn't have her, no one else would want her because he was going to make her as ugly as possible. So, long story short, I gave her a 
super short haircut I tried to even it out the best I could and at the end of the haircut she looked in the mirror and she started to cry and I thought oh no she hates it and think bear in mind I'm very new so I'm very insecure and doubting my skills thinking she hates it she turned around well she jumped out of the chair turned around and gave me the biggest hug and she was like I didn't think you could do anything with this and she's like, thank you so much. I love it. And I never saw her again. Um, but that for me was like, I'm going to do this forever. This is my calling. I just felt such a connection and I felt like I was helping in such a way that I never thought I could do as a hairdresser. So connecting with people on a deep level, huge pro. Con, the pressure to please people. Oh my gosh, this is something I struggle with all the time. I never want to tell people no. I never want to be under the expectation of what other people have for me. And that can be really debilitating sometimes. It can really be stressful. And um, I think we need to stop putting so much pressure on ourselves. But when you're a hairdresser, you're constantly trying to please other people they come to you you do a service for them they may bring out a picture of Jennifer Aniston when they have coarse kinky curly hair and they want that stick straight hair and you have to tell them what can work and try to make them pleased about that even though they want you know something different so that's a challenge at times pro is the creativity of it all I've literally colored people's hair every color of the rainbow and multiple colors at the same time. I've done cuts from the 70s, 80s, 90s, present time. I've combined old cuts with new cuts. I feel like I get to wear whatever I want when I go into work. I, if I want to wear a bandana around my head or, you know, socks up to my knees, I, who cares? It's a hairdresser thing. If you look like really eccentric whatever you're a hairdresser you can so the creativity is nice on every level pro so many nice people there's so many nice people out there people that are just super genuine that you have such a solid conversation with when they're in your chair the con is obviously the flip side of that you get some mean people sometimes um, some people that you just can't please no matter what they're angry with life they just don't want anything positive coming their way and they're gonna take it out on you I mean there are people like that and I've encountered a fair share so that's that's tough if you don't want to handle that then don't do hairdressing pro getting referrals there is such a satisfaction when there's a name in your day in your appointment book that you don't recognize but it says like referral like someone that you've taken care of thinks highly enough of you to send people your way and it's kind of nice to see like a whole family like there have been times where I do a woman's hair for years and then all of a sudden like her kids come in and her husband comes in and then it's like oh all the puzzle pieces match up okay I remember hearing about you going to first grade and I remember hearing about your promotion at work and it's just, it's really cool. The referrals are so awesome. It's such a great compliment. The con to that is getting fired. Unlike typical jobs, you don't just get fired from your big boss. Like you can get fired from any single one of your clients. And of course it has happened to me. I have been fired. And um, sometimes things just don't work out. Um, whether it's a personality thing or my skill set doesn't match what they want and I am not ashamed to say that I am weaker in some areas and stronger in others and if I'm weaker in a certain area then I will just tell you and you can go see someone else I'd rather have you happy than displeased and staying in my chair so um, one story in particular I took care of a girl for 12, I think it was almost 12 years of my career. Super sweet, really beautiful, just down to earth. I felt like we were friends in a way. Um, I was there for her during some tough times. She had told me about 
and offered to, you know, watch her, her kids. And I thought maybe like we were going to start to hang out. And, um, I tried to keep things like very professional though. So, um, I don't think that's the reason why I got fired from her, but I found out she's a YouTuber and I found out from one of her YouTube videos that she had a new hairdresser. So I never even got an explanation or like, hey, you know, I'm just going to go see her because it's easier. Um, so that can be really tough because I get super attached to my clients and especially those that have grown with me over a decade. So word of advice, if you don't want to see your hairdresser anymore, like I promise you, if it's a good solid hairdresser, they will understand if you just tell them that. <laughs> um, I know I do. So that's, a, that's the tough part about being a hairdresser is like, again, you can't please everybody. Pro, this is a, another pro. Okay, so during the shutdown, I was able to do my own hair and I would put highlights in, I would do whatever I needed to do. And um, I know everyone was struggling at that point. I can't even tell you how many Facebook memes were on my Facebook thread. Um, I would just like people making jokes about how desperate they were to get their hair done. And here I am at home and I'm using professional products and I have the skill set to be able to do it. Um, it is a challenge to do your own hair though. It's, it's totally different than doing a client's hair, but I was able to do that. So just being able to come home and do your hair over the weekend or um, just the, the ease of it all. So that is definitely a pro. The con to that is finding time for someone to fix the mess that you've made. I, oh yeah. There have been a couple times that it's not good. It's not good. But, um, and I remember one time my mom and I were talking and I had cut my own bangs and they were too short. You know, it's hard to like judge on yourself and whatever. So I cut my own bangs and they were too short and I, I told my mom about it. I was like, mom, my bangs look so stupid. I feel like I look like dumb and dumber. And she just looks at me and my mother has a way of like saying something in such a calm way that you're like, mm, yeah. Or, you know, mom, I cut my bangs and they're really short and I shouldn't have done that. And she just says, Megan, does a surgeon operate on himself? Mic drop. Yeah. Touche, mama. I gotcha. Good income. You can make really good money being a cosmetologist. It is open-ended. If you work extra, you can make more money. You can take on as many clients as you want with a lot of jobs, um, whether it be at a corporate place, mom and pop shop, or self-employment. There's usually an opportunity daily to take on an extra client at the end of your day, skip your lunch break to take on someone, um, while someone's under the dryer, do a haircut. The possibilities for income are really good if you hustle. Um, the con to that is that it can be unpredictable. You know, you get a snowstorm or you get um, a pandemic, things shut down, um, things get a little wonky. Um, if your kids are sick, you know, if, if you have kids, that's a little stressful because I know some companies, they give you paid time. I, we don't get that. I mean, I don't. I'm self-employed. I don't know about other companies, but I don't think most hairdressers get paid time. Um, so, yeah. And then the con on top of that is that if your child is sick or you have a family emergency or anything like that, you then have to not only call every single person for that day or your receptionist does and cancel them, but you have to find a spot when you're already really busy to then put them before it's, you know, too far out where they're going to get too close to their next appointment. Like I have people that book three appointments, four appointments out. So like they're booked for like January, February, March, April. So if you screw up their appointment, then their February appointment is messed up. Their March appointment's messed up. Their, you know, so you kind of catch my drift. Rescheduling is hard at times. So, but 
the, it's very flexible as well. You know, it, it's yes, it's hard to reschedule people and all that, but the flexibility, I can make my own hours. So I can work as many days as I want. I can work till 11 o'clock at night if I want. I can go in at 5 a.m. in the morning if I want. So that's a pro, being able to work however I want to, whenever I want to. Uh, another pro is making friends. I love the people that I take care of. I've been at it for long enough where I've had the same people for years and years, for the most part. I have a few new people that I'm really fond of as well, but um, I have made some of the best friends, met some of the nicest, kind-hearted people that I never would have met otherwise, and I just feel so blessed. I feel so fortunate to have people in my life like the clients that I have. Oh, I forgot this pro. Christmas. Christmas, Christmas. Oh, such a wonderful pro. So I was telling one of my clients yesterday when I was working how obviously this year is a little bit different because people aren't really exchanging baked goods and everything like that. But we have this long table in the back room, the break room, uh, where we mix color and we have our, our snacks or lunch or dinner or whatever. And um, that table during the holiday season literally can be heaping with treats, whether it be chocolates, can other types of candies, um, baked cookie, like baked breads and cookies. There's so many treats on that table that it's a free for all. We're literally like between each color, like going back and like scarfing our faces because clients have brought them in and been like, Oh, these are for you girls like enjoy Merry Christmas and I love that and um, then you get clients that will tip you for Christmas time which I think is so sweet and I still don't ever expect that but when it happens I'm like oh thank you well, I didn't get you anything um, but yeah I someone told me that in bigger cities I don't know comment below if you are from a bigger city or you know anything about this I was told that in bigger cities, you tip your hairdresser at Christmas the amount that you would um, spend in one visit. So like if you get a $40 haircut at Christmas, you pay for your haircut and then you give them a $40 tip in addition to that. That is pretty, that is pretty crazy. But um, I did have someone come up from Boston her, it's a husband and wife, and they both see me now, and she did do that. She handed me a card at Christmas time, and she had an, enough money in it to basically be two of her services. So, yeah. I don't, so anyway, a pro is Christmas time. You feel so loved. The pros are starting to outweigh the cons. A pro is that there's always room for growth. You can start out literally working in a... Um, funeral home doing makeup for the deceased or you can start out at a salon you can start out at a nursing home but the growth potential is huge you can wind up owning a corporate chain you can end up owning your own shop you can end up just working so much even though you're not the owner that you make bank if you like put it as like your your goal your heart and soul is going to be work 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 um there's always room for growth and not just on a financial level but on a skill set um a skill level you can take so many classes and you get to go to so many fun places they have hair shows in vegas and in boston new york city you can go to academies for makeup for hair extensions for you know you name it so the Room for growth is huge. And now with social media too, like there's so many people that are like beauty icons and they started as a hairdresser or a makeup artist at a counter in the mall. So that is really cool. I just feel like I wouldn't really want a job where I knew I'd be, where I would know I'm in the same spot I am gonna be in in 10 years. I wanna always know that there's more potential. So, I think that about covers it. I've rambled quite a bit, so I apologize for that. But if you haven't subscribed, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. 
um, hit on the notification bell and like this video and I appreciate your time and I'll talk to you next week.